Hello everybody and welcome to the Rational Webcast, also known now as Rational Gamers Webcast Radio, RGWR, <laughs> like it's a real radio station. We're going to be talking about gaming news, tech news, all kinds of jazz like that, and playing some music that we hope you're going to like, like from games and, you know, stuff. So, to kick us off, we're going to play In Case of Trouble by Darren Corb and the fantastic game Bastion. That game is so epic. I mean, I can't even tell you how much I love Bastion. And the OST for it is just... Well, you just heard it. It's phenomenal. I mean, genuinely un freaking believable Alright, so this week in the news. God, what is it? Um, what, 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 what is it? Uh, where it goes in the news. Oh, it's Top Gear, of course. It's Jeremy Clarkson. What am I talking about? I don't know. I haven't done a webcast for quite a while, and it's all kind of ad hoc, just throwing stuff at a wall. And I used to do it with Marty, but Marty's not here. <laughs> well, anyway, Nintendo Switch E3 games lineup revealed. That sounds quite interesting. Why is this website just covered with boobs and King John Oom? This is the express.co.uk. I don't want to look at the express. It's a piece of shit. Well, you've got Mario Kart. Of course you've bloody well got Mario Kart. What? What Nintendo property? What Nintendo uh, game? What console doesn't have Mario Kart? That's kind of ridiculous. That's all this is. According to Contaco, then we don't want to know. <laughs> Oh, okay, Xbox Scorpio. New games uh, feature revealed following PS5 release date prediction. 
I don't care. <laughs> well, uh, basically, Scorpio is going to be um, the next Xbox. Yeah. As if they need... Uh, last I heard, they were going to make the bloody thing modular. Like, you were going to be able to take stuff out, put stuff in, and actually have a PC of sorts in a gaming console, which is kind of... St- well, they can't, that's kind of awesome. But if we're going to keep making consoles, why? Just, why? Why? I don't know. All I can say is why? I'm just looking at random stuff at this point. Uh, Steam's new stats page reveals huge numbers of refund requests. Yeah, Steam's kind of going to go all out. If you kind of uh, listen to something recently by, uh, like, like, like um, videos recently by uh, Tote Biscuit and uh, Jim Sterling, you'll know that they went over to Valve to find out a bunch of stuff. No, there wasn't any talk of a Half-Life. Of course there wasn't. Why would there be? Because it's never coming. Why would I say that? I really want it to come, you know. But they announced, the, well, they didn't announce. They told them about a bunch of stuff that they were planning on doing with Steam, included, including having, like, uh, open, clear stats, revamping the curators page. We have a curators page. Rapid rundown, if you want to go and check it out. <laughs> no plugging at all. But, uh... They've got the stats page up, and it's got a. Sh- it just shows a shit ton of refund requests, averaging out at around holy shit, averaging out at around eighty thousand or so. The minimum it, it spikes obviously during peak times, but um, the minimum is seventy five thousand per 
week is that? And it maxes out about a hundred thousand almost. That is what I mean. Are people just buying games, playing like powering through them as fast as they can, and then trying to uh, get refunds on them? Because I know people who do that with physical games, and you know they can do it with digital games now. Or maybe I should. I have. I have. Um. 687 games in my Steam library. In my Steam library alone. Yeah. Too many games. I've only played about 3% of them or something like that. Yeah, Steam, if you want to give us stats, give us stats of what percentage of games I've actually played on my um on my uh, on my games list because just seeing that number, 687, I think that's a lot. But if it was next to him, you have played like 4% of these games, I'd be like, well, maybe I should stop buying the Humble Bundles. That would be real good. That would be a good idea. But, you know, Steam's willingness to um, progress and their uh, willingness to be open with stuff is it's admirable. I mean, I've always loved Steam. I've always loved Valve for... Uh, they're kind of open nature and you know gamers come first and like EA who are gamers come first um, when it comes to crunch time and somebody's got to blame or be thrown into a fire pit or volcano or whatever what I'm trying to say is Valve is better than EA (laughs) vastly better but again then again everybody knew that so yeah Sony's E3 2017 press conference dated June 12th. This is going to be interesting. Are they actually going to announce what is going to be the PS5 or whatever? Because the PS4 doesn't seem that old. It still seems really young. Is it just me? I mean, I know the PS3's uh, lifespan what seemed shorter than the ps2s but then again it might have been because i was younger and you know as you get older time seems to go quicker which is isn't that just depressing but the lifespan of the ps4 really didn't seem like that long i mean they tried to kind of revamp it with the uh ps4 4k or neo or whatever they decided to call it i personally don't care but hello wife (laughs) <laughs> the tricks is sneaking in. She's got so, so she's got something to talk about in a bit. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, talk about that to you in a bit. But um, yeah, they tried to expand the lifespan of the PS3 with the Move, and you know, Microsoft tried to do the same thing with the Connect with the Xbox, and we just went uh, screw you. We're just going to do another console, and they've done exactly the same thing this generation. But it does seem like it was much shorter. I mean, either that or there was a lot less games that were interesting. I mean, I yeah, most of the games, most of the best games I consider on the PS4 are remastered versions of those on the PS3. That that <laughs> just goes to show the kind of quality. I mean, yeah, yeah, you've got really good games on the PS4, like Infamous Second Son and Bloodborne. But, I mean, the PS3 had uh, Infamous 1, Infamous 2, uh, the Resistance Trilogy. I'm just looking at my collection. Oh, what else we got? Okay, so the consoles just generally aren't as good as um, PC. But <laughs> then you get all the people, and then you get all the Microsoft fanboys. Halo! What about Halo? Okay, I... I do actually, I am thinking about playing Halo, and I'm getting dirty looks now. Yeah, I I said adamantly before I would never play Halo. But I've been thinking lately, uh, give it a try again, because I did play the like, first hour of the first game years ago. I borrowed it off somebody, and I ended up on a ship, and all the corridors looked so identical... That I thought the game had glitched out. (laughs) 
that I read up on it and found that it hadn't. And it was just like that. And I was like, nope. But, you know, in my old age, I guess, I, I, I want to I wanna give it a go. See if it's warm to it. But I'm still not giving Halo as a probs to, you know, Microsoft or anything. It's, it's, it was supposed to be a... Um, it was supposed to be an Apple exclusive, wasn't it? I can't remember. Why am I asking you? I'm so used... This, this is why I need Marty back. <laughs> but, uh, ba- uh, yeah, basically they had uh, something with uh, Steve Jobs. Halo, uh, Apple. That's it, yeah. Uh, Bungie was supposed to be in talks and working with Steve Jobs and Apple. And then at Microsoft brought them. And then they made it for the Xbox. And Steve Jobs lost his shit. So we can't really say that Halo is... Oh my god, it's it's really something for the Xbox. It's, I, I don't like it. I just don't like the Xbox exclusives. I know that pisses a lot of people off, but I don't like... I didn't like Halo. I'll try again. If my opinion changes, I'll let you know. If... Um, my opinion on Gears of War changes, I'll jump out a window. <laughs> Slow ass cover based shooting crap. I mean, the gun's cool. I mean, putting a chainsaw on a gun is just awesome, but the game itself is just so slow and pod lodding and feels like I'm driving a tank stuck in mud. I mean, god damn, Phoenix, pick up your. Is, it, is his name, is it? Marcus Phoenix. Pick up your shit and move. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, this is what this show is all about. Just rambling. Off topic. Next gen Sony. What, what am I talking about? Next gen PlayStation system will launch in 2018. Analysts predict. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, everybody, like I said, is just trying to keep up with Nintendo. You've got, uh, like like I say, everybody's trying to extend the life of their console. Nintendo just goes, nope, here's another console. Uh, Microsoft goes, oh crap, um, throw something out there. And then Sony just goes, uh, I guess we should do something. I mean, it's not like we're losing any money. We're making enough money selling TVs. And that's what I still see Sony as. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, yeah, you've got the PlayStation, but Sony is still a massive market in, well, everything else. Everything else technological. And Microsoft, to be perfectly honest, they could stop making Xboxes and they would still have the Intel goddamn processor to fall back on. And they made the computer. I mean, technically, when I'm, you know, doing my whole PC Master Race thing about. PCs and stuff. I'm really bowing down to Microsoft because even though if I had, if I did have AMD stuff in my system and Linux, then some part of it would still be associated with Microsoft somehow. And so you're basically uh, saying uh, bow down to PC Gaming Master Race for Bill Gates is our overlord. Which is kind of depressing. Although not, because Bill Gates is kind of a nice guy, I think. He uh, gives like shit tons of uh, money to charity. And uh, he generally seems alright. I mean, he's worth like $200 billion. But <laughs> he's, he's magnitude better than Donald Trump, at least. On that note, <laughs> I think we're going to go to our next song. Which is um, one of the best soundtracks in existence, I think. It's, uh, I don't know actually name the song, but it's track five from Quake 2 by Sonic Mayhem. It is Sonic Mayhem. I just had to look that up. Play the song.
Okay, so the Nokia 3310 was probably one of the most popular mobile phones of all time in 2004. There's probably people listening to this who weren't even born when the Nokia 3310 was out. That's how old I am at this point. (laughs) I'm not even 30 yet. I'm not even 30 yet. Anyway, for a while it's been um, known that Nokia is bringing out a, um, air quotes, rebooted 3310. And we have quite a bit more information now, including interesting pictures. They look like toys. But it basically is the Nokia 3310. They don't come with anything. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from, well, they do come. They actually, they do come with something. Something pretty major that phones don't come with these days: a keypad, straight up Nokia thirty three ten style keypad. But the screen of them's big, coloured, and well, it looks kind of high resolution ish. But it's definitely magnitudes better than the original Nokia thirty three ten. And they're obviously pushing this as not just a retro kind of uh, thing for like fans of the original one or nostalgia's sake. It looks like they're actually pushing it as a fully functional phone if you just want a phone. I mean, it's got... it. Okay, here's a point. The Samsung S8. Just got to find it for the price. If you want to buy one new, where are you looking? Six hundred pounds, she says. I've just found it. Curry's seven hundred and eighty. Either way, you could buy a computer for less. You could easily buy a computer for less. Not my computer. <laughs> well, I don't know. You know how these things depreciate. But basically, that is like the um, pinnacle of tech. The only thing that the rate the like uh what what do you call those things uh scores countdowns top tens whatever say is better is the google pixel which i'm seriously considering for my next phone actually because it looks damn fine it also says the apple s the apple iphone was it seven iphone seven eight I thought they were on 7, Samsung was on 8. Because Samsung's overtaken them because Apple decided to name after their phone's S or whatever. Whatever the Apple phone did, the countdowns reckon that's up there. But I seriously doubt that because, well, Apple. (laughs) But basically, S8, really expensive. Got the highest tech you could possibly have. Do you really need it? Seriously, do you really need all the crap in there? It'd be fun to have, yeah, but really, you don't need it. They've moved the fingerprint scanner, so it's right by the camera, the fingerboard will end. They've moved... Wait, so... NESA, apparently they've moved the fingerprint scanner, so it's away from the front, because at the moment you uh, hold down the... Well, you just put your thumb on the button on the front... But because there's no button on the front of a new one, the fingerprint scanner's on the back where the heartbeat monitor is on the S7. That's interesting. Well, I mean, it, it kind of works, but... You best get... They've actually said you best have a lens cleaner on hand. <laughs> well, the fact, the very fact that they say that means that they've they've cocked up somebody somewhere. Somebody's run into the office and says, "I've got a brilliant idea," and it wasn't really thought through that much. Either way, I want the S8 or the Google Pixel. But back to the Nokia 3310 re- reboot. It's got no Wi-Fi. It's got no Wi-Fi. It's only got 2G. Did you say? But really, what's the damn point? Because it probably hasn't got the internet. It's probably got... Yeah, yeah, you can do Facebook. You can do... Yeah, but not any decent kind of yeah. internet. So you can do Facebook and it will... Um, what is it? Uh, 
I don't know if you can actually hear what she's saying. Automatically optimizes pages. Meaning that it has it has WAP. It has WAP. It has it's going back to the old style of mobile pages. God, I hated them. I hate WAP pages so much. I actually hate um mobile pages. Especially um Oh god, uh, especially a few of them actually, but especially the Comic Con website. That is a bastard to use. I hate the mobile page. We're getting way off topic. <laughs> the Nokia thirty three ten looks like a toy, but it's actually kind of appealing to me slightly, and, and it's basically a phone. Guess how much it costs? Fifty quid. Fifty quid. Fifty of your English pounds. Or, while he converts, 50 quid in dollar is, no, sorry, 50 quid in dollar is 64 of your American dollars. Damn, the pound really crashed in 2007. That's what Brexit will do for you. (laughs) Are you looking at me like that? No, did um, the search I've just done on Google where it gives a conversion, it gives me a little um, uh, track of the conversion rate. And in the end of 2006, 2007, they plummeted. But you didn't come here for currency tips, did you? <laughs> no, no, 2016-17, it plummeted. No, I didn't. I didn't say two thousand six and seven. Maybe it's a Nokia thirty. Maybe it's a Nokia thirty three ten taking me back in time to a time when phones were phones and playing Snake was pure. That's what you're most excited about: the fact that you've actually got buttons on the phone and you can play Snake properly. I personally really, really hope. They've um, incorporated a new version of the uh, Music Maker. You could build ringtones on the original 3310. Um, and I really hope they've done uh, made an equivalent of that. But you can guarantee... I mean, I know the Nokia theme, you know. The That's been kind of evolving over time. And right now, it kind of... Do, and they, they've kind of made it all musically and harpy and crap. They're going to put the original back on this phone. So it's going to sound... You're going to have flashbacks to trigger happy TV. Hello! I'm in a shelf! <laughs> yeah, it was stupid. That was the point. Oh. But basically, if you want a phone... That is just a phone. That is reliable. Will last for a month. The battery will last for a month on standby. Even on standby, my phone lasts about 45 seconds. Tell a lie, the S7 battery is pretty good. It lasts for a day. <laughs> then, then not, and, and you know, I, I, can't t- I can't say about how sturdy it is, but... No, in Nokia, they've probably made it so you can smash it repeatedly with a hammer and it'll still be fine. It's like a Toyota Hilux of a phone. But if you want all of that for 50 quid, then... Oh my god! You can take the back panel off and access the battery! It's got a camera on it, so it's not a real Nokia 3310. It's got a camera on it. What's that? It's going to be like one megapixel. Two megapixel. <laughs> Two megapixel. Futuristic. <laughs> and it says there's no selfie camera. What would be the point of the no Snapchat? There's no selfie camera. What would be the point of those no Snapchat? I don't use Snapchat. I've never used Snapchat. I've never even used Instagram. <sighs> this just says a standby battery life of 22 hours, not a month. 
Oh, 22 hours talk, talk time. Yeah, that's pretty decent. And they come in a variety of colours. Uh, warm red, dark blue, yellow, grey. The grey actually looks like the original Nokia 3310. Oh, dear. They, they could at least release a proper retro one that is just literally the Nokia 3310. Oh. <laughs> but it would probably cost more to imitate that old technology than just putting the new tech in it. Because technology, it's a bit weird. Ah, here's some more music. From the fury-inducing game, Risk of Rain, it's Precipitation by Chris Crystal Dulu. I'm sorry if I got your name wrong, dude. Love your music. Megabytes. 16 megabytes and I was gonna I was gonna move on from this stuff. 16 megabytes internal storage. That's what I wondering if it's a typo, but then part of me knows it probably 
probably isn't because they're trying to be... Yeah, it probably people. isn't, but you wouldn't even get Facebook on that. No. It is, it's expandable. You can make it 32 gigs of a micro SD card, but on the phone itself, it's 16 megabytes. Oh, I bloody well hope so as well. Jesus Christ. There's no processor, no RAM. <laughs> <laughs> no processor, no RAM. It is a phone. It's not a computer. It's a phone. You ain't going to be playing um, Battle Legion 6 on this, you know, all of these bloody high graphics apps that get advertised on YouTube these days on it. YouTube, you you say, this is going out on YouTube, I shouldn't insult anybody too much, but you say uh, to people, you've been demonetized because it's not advertiser friendly. It's just all these shovelware bloody... Android games is not great stuff, you know. Why would the advertiser be pissed off about that? That makes no sense. Go on, what's the article about the Switch? She has an article about the Switch because, you know, it's Retro Tricks. Nintendo, that's... It's, it's, it's about as new as she gets. It's about as modern and advanced as she gets. Oh. Well, I was looking at the... Uh, No, no, it can't. I don't even know where that picked you up. Probably like a little mouse. Howie! <laughs> <laughs> so you all seen the Big Bang Theory, right? Anyway, games coming out soon. We have Injustice 2 coming up uh, at some point. Oh, f- I had it just then. Just, uh, 16th of May. 16th of May, you get Injustice 2. Because superheroes beating the crap out of each other. He didn't get enough of that in um, Civil War. Go, go and watch Civil War. Crazy bastards. Friday the 13th on 26th of May. Why would you... Why? Star Trek Bridge Crew. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. May 30th. But you do need a PS, <laughs> PSVR. Basically, you need a virtual reality headset. I don't have one. Send me a vi- hey, HTC, Steam, Valve. Send me a Vive, please. I love you. No. Okay. Well, I'm just, I'm just kind of a Minecraft Switch Edition, May eleventh. Nope, because I'm just plowing for all these because there's one major game coming out on May 5th that is kind of the be all and end all and I care not about anything else Prey of course it had to be Prey didn't it god damn I've been anticipating this game since the first trailer came out or what was it E3 two years ago I can't remember but basically, it's um, it's a sci-fi shooter. Look, it sounds pretty generic, right? But there's just something about it that looks so awesome, and the fact it's built on the Cry Engine, yeah, and made by Arcane Studios. You know, Dishonored. <laughs> okay, just sign me up. But there have been a number of games in the past. Well, I, I say number. One game called Prey, and that was about the uh, that was sci-fi about the uh, American Indian guy who went on an alien ship and could control portals. Coming out around another game similar with the aspects of portals. What was the name? Oh yeah, Portal. But then they tried to make Prey two, and it had this amazing trailer. Have no, absolutely not representative of gameplay at all, but it was badass, and it had Rusty Cage, the cover of Rusty Cage by Johnny Cash, which is just fantastical. Go and listen to that song; it's goddamn amazing. And then it got cancelled, <laughs> and I, I'm not 100 percent sure this one's connected to that, but I like to think it is. And we get Prey, the new one. And it actually is coming to fruition now. 
So I've just done a quick search and found that the new Prey is, you know, as I thought it would be, uh, connected to the original Prey and Prey 2. And interestingly enough, which I didn't know, I now know why Prey 2 fell into development hell. Because... Uh, the <laughs> It was associated with 3D Realms. <laughs> you know, of uh, Duke Nukem Forever, which took forever to come out, and eventually was uh, taken on by 2K. But this is apparently an imagine reimagining of the original Prey, which I actually never got around to pre play, praying, playing, and I really, really wanted to. But finding a copy of that game is actually really quite hard, believe it or not. But they... Uh, they say Arkane built the game as a spiritual sequel, a spiritual success to System Shock. I'm thinking, what's no game already uh, like that of the Bioshock variety? And really, then, shouldn't you call it Prey Shock or something? Shock Prey. Oh, it's a crap name, but. <laughs> but, I'm still excited. Because it's extremely kind of a narrative driven. It's got really kind of high sci-fi kind of weird stuff going on. And I just, it just looks badass, okay? Plus, not to mention, the goddamn soundtrack is by Mick Gordon. Who did the new Doom soundtrack. I mean, come on. That's awesome, isn't it? Uh, and on that note, here's some some music from the Doom soundtrack.
The Switch is not the console to rule them all. Yeah, it is. It's not. This is why I shouldn't record with you in the room. Because you argue about stuff, say, the best phone ever was Nokia 310, the best console is the Switch. Actually, it's 6610. I've never heard of it. My favourite, no, 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 not 6600. 6600. The white one, the first one to have the Symbian operating system. I don't know, I don't even know what the Symbian operating system is. The the, the Nokia's... Jelly Baby! Gingerbread, that's the first operating system I knew to have a name. Yeah. It's not brand new. That was like the third Android operating system or something. Third new, there was the others. I didn't actually get a smartphone until quite late on in you know when they were coming about. My first smartphone wasn't even the electrostatic kind of uh, touch screen. It was literally touch, and you had to practically punch the bloody thing to get it to work. Yeah, <sighs> Will you come closer to the microphone, please? I'll shout. Shout loud! What's the difference between a PS4 and an Xbox One? One plays Uncharted, the other Halo. Um, one your mates might own, the other they probably don't. One is a big black box that sits into your TV, the other is also available in white. Uh, the Nintendo Switch is not like those consoles, and that's what makes it special. It's multicolored and it's not stupid. Fair point. Well, no, the multicolored is bullshit. <laughs> Duh, but the Switch is quite. I do actually. I want actually want the Switch. Believe it or not, yeah. I never wanted a Wii or Wii U, but the Switch I kind of want because it looks kind of cool. Yeah, but you're forgetting one thing: PC. <laughs> yeah. The idea behind the Switch is simple: a gaming machine that plays as well at home as it does on the go. One console to rule them all, if you like. It's what the Wii U is aiming for, and falls so spectacularly short. <laughs> yeah, the Wii, U, the Wii U is pretty shit. Especially that big clunky touchscreen. No, the, the, I admit, the Switch is pretty decent. And it's surprising that they're able to fit that kind of hardware into what was ostensibly a screen. Because you can um, you play like Breath of the Wild, or there's no processing power in a dock at all, is there? It's all in the screen. I must overheat like a bitch! the dock is the least sexy part of the switch it's where most of its magic comes from pop the switch tablet into it while turned on and your tv screen will automatically pop into life in a matter of seconds the same happens the other way when you, you take the turn yeah camera. we know all this okay, okay. we know how the switch works okay, the whole process couldn't be easier or more fuss free it's a delightful piece of techie wizardry it's a delightful right. piece of techie wizardry well so is my what are we talking about? A bunch of bollocks. That's what we're talking about. Now here's something. Not. Oh dear. Not great, but interesting nonetheless. Titanfall real-time strategy game announced for mobile devices. It's gonna be like one of those um. It's the Star Wars Commander games, isn't it? Right here. Wait a thousand hours. Pay real money for gems or whatever. It's not gonna be great. I've never actually got around to play Titanfall. Uh, I do have a two day trial on uh, Origin, I think. I just never, I have never been bothered to redeem the bloody thing, which just sucks. <laughs> actually, it doesn't suck. I'm not too fussed. I wouldn't mind playing the second game, but I hear apparently the campaign for that's actually half decent. But the first one I'm not a multiplayer person says the person who spent about a thousand hours on Overwatch and Planetfall 2 but come on Overwatch is like a goddamn masterpiece I love Overwatch is that a Mega Drive Mini what Can, give me give me give me the tablet that's a Mega Drive Mini I have seen that there were rumours about it yeah reborn Mega Drive console we have it's a Mega Drive. 80, I know, but it's about 80 pre-installed games, wireless Mega Drive controllers. This is the, this is the ultimate merging of retro and modern. I like it. 
Although you still can't sit more than a meter away from the console, otherwise it gets to the <laughs> Well, you did, you couldn't yeah, anyway. Has it got has it has it got H has it got HD? No, of course because not. um, <laughs> playing Sonic on my damn TV is difficult. It looks awesome. pixelated as balls. I know I have I've seen about it uh, because uh, Nintendo did the same thing with the NES. They released the mini NES. And then discontinued it after like 2,000 units. And now they're releasing a mini SNES, aren't they? Oh, I haven't seen that. Um, and they're probably going to discontinue that after about 40 units. So, God knows how long this is going to last. There you go. Prey is basically Bioshock in space, and we love it. That's an early review of Prey. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. I will be. I will be playing that. Preo shock, Preo shock. Okay, why didn't I think of that? Is that? Is there somebody in the comments of uh, NG4? What the bloody hell is going on over there? My hamsters are escaping. Uh, I forgot what I was saying. I'm just talking a load of shit, really, aren't I? <laughs> Prey has so much going for it, but the most of the time we feel like we are playing Bioshock set in a weird space setting. Hey, I'm down for that. That's that's like, that's like the dream, isn't it? I mean, the utopian kind of, um, oh, I can't remember the right word. But the setting in Bioshock was interesting, but it wasn't sci-fi. I love sci-fi. Bioshock Infinite was closer with all its uh, quantum stuff. <laughs> and te techie talk. And the tree siblings who actually spoiler turned out to be the same person from different realities that was closer to like sci-fi and weirdness and stuff but uh, i've been hankering for a good run gun sp space thing for a while and prey looks like it's gonna be the thing anyway i'll stop talking about prey and you can have your triple track of the week
Right, so that was the triple track. Uh, first one was Dirt uh, from the game Unreal, which uh, I adore, by Alexander Brandon. And personally, I think it sounds like a Nine Inch Nails song. He was practically just... Actually, what was that? Uh, no, I think that was my Michael Van der Burr's boss. It was one of those, but I think they were channeling Trent Reznor when I made it. Second one was Watery Graves by Laura Shingahara. And that's from Plants vs. Zombies. Absolutely brilliant in itself. And a third one was Sacrificial by Dar- Danny Baronofsky and The Binding of Isaac. Links to all this music is in the descriptions below. So if you want to go and buy it, then, you know, just go down. Get it. It's awesome. It's all good. Support the composers, creators, whatever. And go play the games for God's sakes because that's what we're here for. So Amazon's getting a new fire stick with, you know, uh, the Echo Dot Alexa. Yeah, that's built into the fire stick now. So you can basically say, TV, play, I don't know, Breaking Bad or whatever. And your TV will go, all right, Dave, if it decides it wants to listen. I mean, I yell at Alexa, Alexa, turn off the lights. And she's like, I'm sorry, Dave, I didn't understand what you said. No, Dave. I can't open the pub bay doors. <laughs> Actually, you can say stuff like that, Troy, and it's badass. Uh, you say, um, what was it? Uh, open a pub bay doors at Hal. And she's like, I cannot do that, Dave. And I'm not Hal. <laughs> she's got a bunch of uh, stuff like that. But yeah, basically, this new fire stick. How much did it cost? 50 quid. Yeah, 50 quid. So it's about the same price as a normal fire stick. But it's the next thing up. It's got a legs built in it. I think it can link up with all the others. But here's an interesting thing. Amazon has hired Craig Sullivan as a creative director. Which is... um, is it, Are they going to start making games? Amazon Game Studios. That could be interesting. I mean, Amazon have been doing a lot of stuff. I'm really branching out over the past few years. But games is never, never really something I peg them for. I mean, maybe really simple app games. But come on, Amazon started off as a bookstore. They were selling books on the internet. And they started selling like music and films and blah, blah, blah. And they, they branched out to groceries. And now they're having AI and they own Twitch, and now they want to make video games. If, I mean, they started, they they actually funded uh, TV, like Netflix did as well. Uh, They've done lots of stuff. If they make a good game, then I'll be fully, fully in for that. But I really can't see uh, a game coming out with uh, Amazon Game Studios. A game by Amazon. Can I can I reorder some tissue paper while I'm uh, playing this game? Probably, because they've got those little bloody um, buttons where you can buy them, and uh, you can stick them to the wall. Like if you need uh, scare pads for washing up or something, you just you just get a button, put it by your sink. Oh, I need some scare pads. Press the button, automatically orders them. Have you seen these? Oh, yeah. The yeah. They cost like a fiver each. And I'm thinking, what if you accidentally press it? I mean, what if you put it somewhere where you just brush past it every day? You click, click, click. And then suddenly you find 50 bottles of Domestos on your bloody step. I don't want to risk it. What if you got kids? Press, press, press. Oh, we've got 40,000 cans of cat food. It doesn't seem ideal to me. But, you know, that's that's the way the world's going. I mean, you can already say to her, like, Alexa, you know, Alexa, uh, she, don't worry, she's not in the room. She's not in the room. She's not going to order anything. I hope. She might be listening. She can't even hear us downstairs. Yeah, she can't even hear us downstairs. But uh, we don't call her Alexa anyway. We call her Echo. Um, but you can already say to her, you know, Alexa, go order whatever. And she's like, okay. And she'll get it through to you. I'm eventually going to get to a point where you kind of got to Tony Stark kind of house. Jarvis. Yes, sir. Save the world as Vision or some shit. 
and it's just uh it's just some, sometimes technology kind of boggles my brain just to the extent that it's yeah we're not we haven't got flying cars or hoverboards like they're predicting back to the future too but what we have got is going very kind of it is going star trek you watch star trek we're more advanced in them in some uh aspects i mean have you seen their tablets in star trek samsung tabs way better To finish off, lots of Steam got on sale this week. Age of Wonders 3. 75% off. No. Battlefleet Gothica Armada. Midweek Madness. No. Darksiders franchise. Now, that, that's kind of okay. Uh, £8.99. £8.99 for the entire Darksiders franchise, including Darksiders War Mastered Edition. Uh, Dark Souls 2 Death Definitive Edition, because you know it's death. Uh, plus soundtrack, and you know Dark Souls, it kind of gets stick from people sometimes. But it's not a bad game. It's fun. It's it's dumb fun. Nine one one operator. That's that's got to be YouTuber bait, hasn't it? Nine 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 one one. What's your emergency? Okay, maybe not YouTuber bait. It looks like a Quite a complicated management game, actually. If you're interested, seven pound fourteen. Some mostly positive uh, reviews on Steam, and it kind of you do just control where ambulances and stuff go. Yeah, it's a management game. Interesting. Portal Knights. Now, uh, somebody I speak to on Twitter uh, said he might start recording Portal Knights, and it looks really fun. It's currently in early access and is on uh, sale uh, for £8.24. And it's kind of like very cartoony and very kind of almost Minecrafty. Again, what game isn't these days? But yeah, I go on adventures and you can do all kinds of jazz. And it, it just looks pretty with the water effects in it compared to the voxel kind of graphics and everything else. The water looks fantastic. 
It's quite... It's quite disconcerting the difference between them. But... Oh, well. <laughs> Sleeping Dogs, £3.99. Yeah, that's a no-brainer. Get that. If you haven't got... It's a definitive edition as well. Not definitive. Def... def <laughs> uh, bad joke. It's an awesome game. Get it. There's no question. Get it. And the Star Wars games. Not Star Wars. Normal game, Star Wars. Lego. Got Star Wars Complete Saga, £3.74. And uh, Star Wars 3. Is that supposed to be Episode 3? Three? £3.74. Yeah, they're fun for a little bit. But if you're looking for something more... <sighs> with some more substance, and it's not worth getting. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it has happened about a week or so ago. Bayonetta come to PC. <laughs> well, actually, a week? That was that was actually ages ago. I say a week ago. About three weeks ago. Bayonetta come to PC. Haven't got it yet, but I'm quite interested in getting that. Because that just... It's insane, dumb, fun. I mean, there's a bit where you're fighting somebody on a collapsing clock tower that is kind of collapsing constantly. And it's all kind of... It, it, Yata Kroshaw uh, termed it a spectacle fighter. As in, yeah, she wears spectacles. <laughs> but it's also, you stare at it and go, What? <laughs> and I just... I, I Sometimes I need a game like that. Where it's just kind of nuts and nothing makes sense. And it's just fun. I mean, she's got guns on her feet for crying out loud. In what you And her hair attacks people. In what kind of universe <laughs> would that make any sense? But I don't care. Okay, on that note, I think I'm going to bring this webcast, radio, whatever you want to call it. It's the first one I don't know how to sign off yet. To a close. And I'm going to bring it to a close with Trance Rising by Thomas Happ. A piece of music from Axiom Verge. A fantastic side-scroller. Modern, modern style side-scroller. Uh, it's on Steam now. Everybody have a great day. Great week. Whatever else. And I will talk to you soon. <laughs>